Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mystery Media tutorial, we're taking a look at how to make an object follow along a path inside Houdini. Now, this is an essential sort of motion graphics staple that you'll always have to do, so it's a good thing to know how to do, and it's not the most intuitive thing to do in Houdini. But once you get the hang of it, then, you know, you've got the ability to do it in Houdini, and you can do all the other magic stuff that Houdini can do. So, inside Houdini, the first thing we'll do is create a path. Now, like everything in Houdini, there's a million different ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you two. The first one, sort of the quick and easy way, that's a little bit dirty and I don't really like, but you can go up to your shelf tools, go to create path and you can click around. You see, it makes this really nice path. And you can of course go and edit it afterwards. So let's say we'll move this guy, hit T for transform, move it over here. So that's, that's pretty nice looking. This totally works and is great for quick stuff. If you look at your object manager over here, this is just a mess. So, you know, you can totally do this. There's ways to organize this, it's totally fine. But whenever I make a path, I normally reach for a different option. So I'll drop down a geometry node and dive in here and add in an add sop. So in here, we can add a bunch of points. So I'll turn on our point visualization here and we'll enable this first point. You can see we're getting a point right in the center of our origin there. And I'll hit D and go to guides and then turn our point marker size up. So if we move this over, you can see point marker is getting bigger. So I got this nice big marker to see just in case you're on a small screen. So we've got that and now we can add a couple more. So let's add like six points and I'll go ahead and enable all of these and we'll just move them to some random locations for now and we'll make them look cool in a bit. And there we go, nice. So now I've got some points going around and the next thing we'll do is connect these so we make a spline. So right now you can see this is already a much slower way but you know, choose whichever one you want. But in order to connect these, we just go to Polygon and then click by group. And so now they're all connected and let's move them around some. So if we hit enter over our viewport, then you see we get all of these nice transform handles. So now we can move these around. So maybe we want this to be sort of flowing up and around and out. And we'll move this maybe here, this one up a bit. So there you go, now we've got a path for our object to follow that is looking just fine and dandy. So now we'll smooth this out and we can do that by adding a convert node and dropping this in here and we'll view this. And now we'll change this from convert to polygon to we'll do a NURBS curve in this. So now you can see the path tries to fit these points if you want a different sort of control. You can of course do a Bezier curve also and bring the order up and change it around. But for this one, I'm just gonna do an NURBS curve because that's nice and easy. So now I've got our nice swooping curve done here and it's all you know, in much fewer nodes than before when we had like 80, 80 things there. And all these points are of course addressable as before. So if we turn on our point numbers and they're very small in the viewport. So we'll go ahead and set our font size to large. Now you can see we've got zero, one, two, three. We've got all of our points available if we want to do anything with them at a later date. So now we're ready to start moving an object around. So we'll set this to path, just so we stay a little bit organized. And we'll drop down another geometry node. And we'll put a sphere in here, because why not? And we can leave this as a primitive and just bring the scale way down. That's totally fine. And now here comes the tricky part. Once again, there is a shelf tool to do this. So, and the results are basically the same. So I say, go ahead and use the shelf tool, but we're gonna build it anyway, just so you sort of understand what's going on in case. Cause then once you understand what's going on under the hood, then you can expand this out and do all your Houdini magic and do more than just make it follow a path. Cause any idiot can make something follow a path in another application, but here we can do so much more. And that's very exciting. So we'll go over to our constraints tab and here we've got follow path. So we will select the object that we're going to move and then hit enter. And then we'll select the path that we're gonna constrain it to and hit enter. And I've also got a look at object. So if we wanted this to be like an arrow pointing at something, we could add that in. And we've also got a look up object in case we want to keep this oriented a certain direction and it's automatically automated with an expression to have it move along when you do it this way. So very cool. But let's go ahead and rebuild this from scratch just so we've got it. So you saw that whenever we add that shelf tool, added in a constraint network in here. So tab 
straight network and see we automatically get this get world space node which is great and now in here we'll drop down a follow path node just easy as that so now we'll drop this in here and we'll set this to output and we will set our sop path to our path node and now you see our geometry snaps over to our path and we can move the position along just like that. So now that we've got this built, let's go ahead and talk about these parameters a bit. So I'll jump out of here and add in a box instead. And drop this in, we'll visualize this. And we can bring this down and we don't need these point or number visualizations. So we can turn those off now. And jump back into our constraint network. And here we've got our follow path node. And the first one is normalized distance. And this ranges from zero to one for zero being the beginning of the path, one being the end and all the values along between. So this will scale as our path scales. So if we go back to our path node, let's go ahead and just set a quick key here. Say control one equals here and control two equals our path so here. Hit enter in the viewport again to add now you can see if we move these around and let's actually go back to one and we'll set this all the way to the end two if we move these around you can see that our box stays at the end so if we change this maybe you want you know a different effect go back to our constraint network and i'll set this to control three as a quick mark if we change this from normalized distance to, to normalized spline, this is the same sort of deal here, except I believe this is based on the number of points instead of the distance. So now we'll go to distance from start, and now this starts to get you the actual distance along the path. So if we change our points around like we did before, you see our box will stay the same distance from the start. So even if we added points here, so if we added one to the end, we'll go ahead and add another point and turn it on. You see, now our box stays in the same place. So that can be very useful for all sorts of stuff. And move this up or something, just for fun. Jump back to our constraints. And now we've got distance from the end, which is the same sort of thing, but from the end, believe it or not, pretty crazy. And then distance point attribute. So this way we can set attributes along the path. So we could set our point numbers to be, you know, various amounts on there. A little more advanced stuff in this beginner tutorial we'll go into, but just know that we have this distance attribute available and you can of course change the attribute here. So we'll keep this to normalized distance because that's nice and easy. Also a quick note about the distance attribute is this takes a vector, but will only use the X attribute. So just something to know. Then we've got our look at mode, which we've got along path. So right now you can see that our box is sort of facing along the distance of our path as we move it around, which is very nice. We can also change this to none. And you see it just sort of floats along. So this can be a different sort of effect. And then we've also got, once again, direction from point attribute. So in this case, it will use all three components of the vector. And we'll change this to a long path again, just because that's nice. And now we've got the up vector. So you can normally just keep this at Z minus and Y plus. But if you see, if we change these around some, our little axes around here are changing. And you can also, of course, change this to up vector attributes from path and a long path. So we'll just keep this as our normal standard up vector. And we can sure it's change this around here. So you can set that there and we could of course rotate along this vector and we can change this around some so all the stuff that you probably won't use most of the time but it's good to have and they've also got our channel tab we just have a lot more align alignment options that i never really have to deal with there's some stuff on the documentation if you want to go check that out i'll put a link to the documentation for this note in the description if you want to check that out as well and we've got our common which you know is pretty common so there we go. Now I've got our simple thing. We can do a quick little animation. So zero, it'll go to frame 36, make this one, control alt click, create a keyframe. 
and we'll set our timeline length to something like 40. And we'll set this to real time. There we go. Very nice. And of course, from here, we can also have our box emit particles or do all sorts of other stuff. In fact, you know, this tutorial is over. If you like, give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike, accept, etc. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Are there any questions you have about Houdini? I know it's sort of an enigma to people just getting started with it. And most of the tutorials out there are for geniuses. So as I come up with these little ideas for simple things that are, you know, a little less intuitive than maybe they should be, I'll make a tutorial about them. But, you know, any things you've been wondering about, or if you remember, if you're a more advanced user and you're some, for some reason, still here, you know, let me know of things that sort of gave you trouble that you think other people might want to see. Um, also, subscribe to Mies Media YouTube channel if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh... Hopefully I'll be doing more motion graphic stuff along with the normal color grading and other sort of stuff that we do. Um, check out meastumedia.com slash products. If you're here for this Houdini tutorial, you're probably into motion graphic stuff. Check out the stock footage that we have there, which is good overlays for stuff to just sort of spice up your animations. It's a nice way to just sort of throw on top of something and make it look more expensive quickly. I use it a lot for titles, the lens junk pack, the atmospheres pack. Check that out. Um, I think that's all the housekeeping. Now let's go and... You know, just make this emit a couple particles. And I will hop up and we'll add down another geometry node. And we'll call this one particles. And I'll drop down an object merge. And we'll change our transform to into this object. So now we get it following our transforms. And we'll drop down a quick little pop network. Drop this in here. View this. Now, if we play, there we go. We get some particles going around. Nice. Very cool. Let's add just a little bit of turbulence. Or I guess I should say pop wind. And now, that's not very much going on, so we'll add some amplitude. There we go. Now I've got an animation happening. We can bring our birth up by like 10 or so. There we go. And now we've got a thumbnail. Look at that. Make an object, follow a path. Very cool. So thanks for staying around for the end part. Um, I know that doing it like this probably kills my watch time, but who cares about YouTube? We'll just make cool stuff, right?